So in this slideshow, we're going to look at, um, so the thing that makes it a computer is that it takes some, now we have many different types of computers. Now with a general purpose computer, you've got um, a smartphone there at the bottom. Now what we're going to do for the next um, few slides, or you're going to do, um, So with a computer, what we do is we feed data into it and information comes out of it. Um, so if you think about a spreadsheet here, uh, what we do is we take numbers and we put them into the spreadsheet. So the numbers that we put into the spreadsheet on their own, they might not actually mean much yet. But when we put them into the spreadsheet, it can produce a graph or a chart. And that graph or a chart can show us lots of information. Um, so the numbers are the raw data that's going in. That's the data. And the graph that comes out is the processed information. Now, all computers have hardware and software. Hardware is the physical components of the computer. As it says here, these are the things you can touch, so the mouse, the keyboard, and so on. We also have software. Software is the programs that run on your computer. Sometimes we call these apps, and they tell the hardware what to do. Now, something to understand is, as it says down here, a computer cannot do anything until it has software loaded onto it, but equally, software can't do anything without um, hardware. Um, on which to run. So the software and the hardware work together and on their own they're both useless. And there are lots of different examples of these. We'll have a look at some of those later on. Now input devices. All machines have needs to have at least one input device or computer systems and it's something that allows you to enter data into the computer ready for processing. Um, input devices. You can think about um, if you have a, a, a many computers you'll enter text by typing it into a keyboard. You might um, give it some direction information. So for example, you might point at something using say a trackpad or a laptop, or you might have some devices that can do input. And they can also do other things like output, like the touch screen on your um, smartphone. If you take an output device, this is the way that the computer uses to show the world what it's done. So it displays or outputs the processed information. So um, output devices would include things like a screen. You're going to be looking at one of those right now. So we often call these video display units, VDUs. And another example of an output device is a speaker of some sort, including those tiny little ones that you put in your ears called headphones. Um, we also need, most computer systems need storage devices as well because um, a storage device is something that holds a permanent copy of data or information. And um, most computer, computer systems have one or more storage devices. So if you've got a laptop or a desktop computer, you might have a hard disk drive or an SSD inside it. And the key thing about that makes it a storage device is that when you turn the computer off, the data is stored on the device. And when you turn it back on, the data comes back. And this is quite different to uh, the computer's memory, the RAM, because if you have information in RAM, you turn the machine off, when you turn it back on, the, the data is no longer in RAM because it gets um, lost when you turn the power off. So storage devices hold data long term. And an example of that, as I say, is an SSD or a hard disk unit in a laptop or desktop computer. In a phone, you might have a, a SIM card is actually a storage device, as is a uh, memory card that you put into the device. And um, another example would be the disc and the DVDs that you put into your games consoles. Now here we've got some pictures at the top and the bottom. And as you can see at the top here, we've actually got lots of stuff. This is all uh, hardware devices. And down at the bottom here, we've got some software. So over here, we've got a VDU, that's an output device. A mouse, which is an input device, you use it for pointing and clicking, use it to activate and select items. A uh, disc here, this could be a Blu-ray disc, or it could be um, a DVD or even a CD-ROM. And uh, that is a storage device. 
a USB memory stick. Um, don't call them USB USB devices because a USB is actually just the uh, the plug. Um, USBs don't actually are you just used to connect things together. But this uh, pen drive, the memory stick, is um, that is a storage device, portable one, really useful. Um, keyboard, obviously we use that for entering text into the computer, so that's an input device. A printer produces what sends hard copy, in other words, paper copies of data, so that's outputting it. This is what a hard disk drive looks inside, so the disk here spins around and holds the data, and there's an arm that moves back and forth to read the data. Um, so that's a storage device. This thing here, speakers, another kind of speakers, we call these ones headphones. This here, this weird looking thing, if you've not seen one of those before, is a webcam. So that's um, an input device. Uh, your smartphone, if you've got one, does have a webcam. Uh, we don't call it a webcam, no, we call it a camera. Um, this thing here is a memory card. So the data actually gets stored in the little kind of uh, this little square here, which is using um, the same kind of uh, storage systems that are used in these pen drives and in an SSD if you've got one of those inside your computer and then finally this thing over here if you've not seen one of these before this is a scanner so you can lift the lid of that up uh, this thing here with the kind of uh, the funny shape on it you can lift that up put a piece of paper in it put the lid back down press a button and if you put your paper in the right way around um, the scanner will take a recording of the image of that paper and then load that into the computer so now you've got a copy of that paper document on your computer down the bottom here we have uh, some software so we've got the worst version of windows ever windows 8 and then we've got some uh, application software we've got word word processor access which is a database excel which is microsoft's spreadsheet and powerpoints which is a multimedia presentation program now you've got a task to do and your task as it says here is to um is as i said you're going to carry out some research into smartphones uh, you're going to put this information into a word document so you're going to need to make a new word document um give it a heading and the heading should be input output and storage devices save it in a suitable location you should. and then once you've done that as it says here carry out some research into smartphones we then need to find an image of a smartphone and put that in your document add a subheading that says this section is for the um, smartphone and then we want you to list and explain the purpose of all the input, output and storage devices you can identify in that smartphone. So, for example, one of them we've given you here is that most smartphones have a camera that you can use to capture images. Once you've done that for the smartphone, I would like you to do the same thing, but this time do it for a games console of your choice. And once again, we'd like an image of the games console. And then I'd like you to list and explain all of the input, output and storage devices that your games console can work on. And when you're trying to work out whether these, um, what the in input, output, and storage devices are, think about how you kind of do tell the phone you want to do something, or tell the smart, tell the games console you want it to do something. The way you kind of tell, give the device its instructions is through an input device. Think about the way that it gives you information. It tells you something's going on. Um, it's using its output devices to do that. And then think about how, if you want to store something, save it away for later. How can you do that? Well, that's that's done using a storage device. Now, once you've made your document, I want you to um, spell check it. I want you to proofread it. Make sure it's as error free as you can. Um, make sure it's professional quality. So we should be looking at, for example, black text on a white background. If you've got images, they need to be distortion free and of a suitable size. Uh, you need to have headings. You need to have subheadings. And very importantly, the text needs to be readable so that means a standard font like Arial um, and the maximum size of your the main text in your document the body text that should be 12 no larger than 12 please and no smaller than 10 um, the only thing that should be larger than that is the headings and the subheadings anyway once you've got that um, made you can save it and then upload it to its learning for checking